Good morning. I'm Senator Mark Johnson, the Republican lead in the Senate. Uh, it's good to see you all here on this Monday morning of the never-ending winter, it seems like. Got another <laughs> snowstorm coming through. But thank you so much for being here this morning. Just, we want to take a moment this morning uh, as we get going. There's a lot of activity going on today, especially when we're on the House side concerning bonding. And we want to make sure that our position is very clear. We've, we've been talking about this for the last two weeks, that uh, we have a position right now in the Senate where we want to make sure that that bonding bill gets through. However, we do have a concern, and that's for Minnesotans getting the tax cut that they deserve, making sure that the surplus comes back to them. So as the House continues to debate, uh, starting at 3 o'clock, the bonding bill, we just want them to know that that, that bill is going to be dead on arrival because we believe that, that we need to see some tax cuts tied to that. Now, this is March 6. This is probably one of the earliest bonding bills that, that has gone through. Typically, the bonding bill is the last thing to leave uh, the session. But we could easily get that done earlier if we could get uh, the tax cuts that Minnesotans need to be moving first. Uh, to talk a little bit more about the bonding and some of the things going on there, uh, Senator Housley will step up next and, and describe a little bit more of that. Thank you. Thank you. And Senator Johnson, to your point, it is State High School Hockey Tournament Week, so of course we're going to have more snow. <laughs> um, Senator Karn Housley, uh, we have been working with our caucus and the majority to finalize our project so we could pass a bonding bill very quickly if we start to see some tax cuts. Um, whether we pass a bonding bill today or pass it in May, um, the, there's no good reason. The, the bonds aren't issued until August, so there's really no reason to put government first and borrowing above tax cuts for Minnesotans. Um, I, I just, I was thinking this morning, how can, how can we in good conscience go back to the taxpayers of Minnesota and say, oh yeah, we have this historic surplus, almost $18 billion, but we're going to put almost $2 billion on a credit card and not give you a penny of your hard-earned dollars back. That just doesn't make sense to me. I think it's a waste of time for the House to take this up today and send it on over to the Senate because it will be dead on arrival without any tax cuts. So to speak to that, we've got Senator Bill Weber. Thank you, Senator. Uh, certainly this last week we've had a, quite a bit of discussion about uh, our proposed tax cut plans. And I think it's time for us though, to recognize as we look at these two bills that when we have historic surpluses in this state, uh, truly it is time to bring uh, some tax relief to the people of Minnesota. The sad thing is, is quite frankly, a number of these things could have been accomplished last year. Had the governor not kept the House DFL from coming back to the table to pass the final conference report, we would have had Social Security already eliminated from the tax stream in Minnesota. But that did not happen. And as a result, that remains a problem for the senior citizens of this state. And so as we go forward, uh, we all know that it, it, we just need a simple majority to pass uh, a tax bill. Uh, both tax bills and bonding bills have to originate in the House. And so today, we would encourage the House to consider uh, bringing about tax relief for Minnesotan. Uh, I, I give the Senate tax chair credit. She has already heard a bill uh, that, uh, that would eliminate state income tax on all Social Security benefits, and, and we stand ready to help uh, her pass that bill. And, uh, and so at this point in time, I think we'll open it up for, for questions and uh, take it from there. What do you need to see to get on board with the bonding bill? I mean, you said tech. What, what specifically would get you on board? If they went ahead and proceeded with the tax cuts uh, and, and made sure that they will carry through on what they say is a priority to give tax cuts to the people of Minnesota, uh, that would certainly uh, go a long ways to us uh, being able to support a bonding bill. We all recognize that there is a need for a bonding bill, but if you're going to leave the tax bill, wait till the end of session, now what are you looking at? You're looking at a proposed increase, what, $11 billion in the budget? Uh, how much of that surplus is going to be left by the end of session? Uh, so I think that's one of the reasons we want to see tax cuts for the citizens of Minnesota front and center. 
But do you need the tax bill to pass off the Senate floor or just inclusion of tax cuts in the Senate version? Because there's also disagreement, as you know, between the House and the Senate about what to include already in the tax bill. Tax bills have to originate in the House as well. So for, a, for there to be a meaningful tax bill, it's going to have to come over from there. But you want the House bill, you want the tax bill to pass. Does the tax bill have to pass the Senate before you're willing to put up the votes for bonding? Or is like inclusion of certain provisions in a, in a draft enough for you? You know, at this point in time, we're, we're talking about uh, some a discussion, a higher level discussion that will occur between uh, the the minority leader and the majority leader at that point. But do you need it, also? Do you need any sort of amount on tax cuts? I mean, just tax cuts. It's what do you, do you need? Some anything specific or? And if you recall, last week we we put out the give it back uh, proposal that we had. And so you can check the numbers on there. Everything is Social Security, uh, that we, we had full elimination of the Social Security, the taxation on the benefits there, the child care tax, or the child uh, tax credit that we had as well, uh, the lowering the tier, the property tax relief. Those are the ideas that we want to see come forward. We want to see those pass off the Senate floor. And then we can, we can give up our votes. Because right now, they can just do a simple majority on the tax bill, right? So our only ability to guide this is through our bonding bills. So this is our leverage. We can have those negotiations and discussions, but that's very, very critical to have assurance that those issues will get done. It's some of them, all of them, or is that the starting point for negotiations? Absolutely. That's our proposal right now. And so, I mean, if they want to come and have negotiations and talk about it, but this is what Minnesotans want. This is what came to us through uh, months of door knocking, of conversations with Minnesotans. So this isn't our ideas. This is Minnesotans' ideas and what they've asked for. If the end result is that you don't get that you know, package of tax cuts, but they just go with cash in some form for a lot or most or all of this big capital investment project, sure. is that a win for you? Is that fine for you? Do you oppose that? Where do you, how, how would you react to that? That's a fantastic bill. So they, they've been threatening, oh, well, we'll just bypass you and do an all-cash bill. Just the, the idea that they're going to try to bypass half of the legislature in order to get an all-cash bill done to avoid giving tax cuts back to Minnesotans, and they should be ashamed to even bring that up, to threaten that. They'll, they'd rather do a cash bill than to give tax cuts to Minnesotans. This is not something that Minnesotans have been asking for. Not... You know, they want the bonding, they want the projects done, but they also want relief. So the idea that they're going to try to avoid that through cash bill, that, that's kind of a shame on them. So there's nothing specifically in these bonding bills that you disagree with. It's not just that you're losing the, the chance to use this as leverage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so the idea that this is the 2022 bill, I mean, we can disagree on that, and Karin, you can probably talk to that as well, but uh, we didn't see the bonding bill last year. So, I mean, but the projects that we've seen come through this year, I think that we can get behind it. Wastewater, uh, you know, infrastructure, roads, bridges, that's the type of things Minnesotans need, right? I mean, I just drove down last night and was very, very thankful for the snow plows out there and the good roads. But uh, that's stuff that we can get behind and want to see get done. This is a win-win. We're not up here being obstructionists, saying, no, we can't do this. What we want to do is have good infrastructure across the state, but also be the kind of state in the nation that attracts workers, employers, and you need that through lower taxation. Right now, we are not the destination state for people. We want to make sure that this is a sustainable system that we have, and we cannot carry that debt load, that service load, if we're losing people, if we're losing companies. And so we need growth in this state. And what we're saying is we have a balanced approach to do that that Minnesotans can get behind. In the main objection with the, the governors in the DFL House majority's idea of like doing targeted tax relief rather than general tax relief, what's the, the main issue with that? Do you want to talk about that a little bit? The problem is, is that's a really small target. Uh, you know, you can talk about uh, his increase of, of Social Security uh, income exemption. It's really, at the end of the day, is, it's a nothing burger uh, for the people of Minnesota. 
And uh, what we need to see is, is, quite frankly, the total elimination. With there only being 11 states that tax Social Security benefits, uh, it's time for us to, to stop that practice. And, uh, and you know, the other uh, elements, you can talk about the child tax credit. Uh, the governor starts to eliminate it at a $50,000 income. Uh, the Senate, uh, or the Republican proposal that was brought out last week between the House and the Senate uh, minority caucuses uh, talks about starting the, to remove it at a $150,000 income level. The reality of it is, is that uh, you know, there are many needs out there for families in Minnesota. There are many needs out there for the senior citizens of Minnesota. And quite frankly, uh, our, our proposals address those needs. The governors, I believe, fall very short. There's an amendment with all the Republican projects for the House bill that's going to be later today. Has the Senate had any input on that, or is that sort of reflective of only House Republican priorities? Um, thank you. Yes, the amendment that the Senate or the House Republicans have for what was parked there called library grants, those are just House priorities. Not to say if that was how we ended up um, at the end of the day, not that we wouldn't vote for that. But again, our priorities and what we've heard from the people of Minnesota is give it back first before we put anything on the credit card. And as for the um, 2022 bill, I know I've, I've heard them say a lot that this is the 2022 bill, let's push it on through. Well, also in 2022, there was an agreement on um, Social Security giving that, those tax dollars back to our seniors. Like, let's start there and, and get that money back to our seniors. And this 2022 bill is not 2022 bill. It is a 2023 bonding bill. So much has changed. Uh, there's $400 million more in this bill. Um, a lot of the projects have changed. There's, there's probably 40% different projects in this bill. So this really is a 2023 bill. So if we're talking 2023 and we were knocking on doors in 2022 and they're asking for this historic surplus back to the people, that's what we want to see done first. The GO bond um, supermajority in the Senate, is it 41 votes? Or yeah, we need 11. 42. 42. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. You're staying busy.